bag build quite fast. What's up guys, welcome back or to the channel. Today, I am exhausted. I was gonna do this whole like cinematic thing with these boxes and get them all set up for you guys. Uh, we got upgrades going down to the truck today. However, I'm exhausted. Uh, I know this is like a, a channel where I like encourage you to try things and do them yourself and stuff like that, but if there's one thing I will never recommend doing yourself or doing in general is lifting a Tundra at home. Every time I do one, it fights me. Things are in awful locations. Uh, it's just a nightmare. Every time. Nissan, Toyota, yeah, stuff like that. Just not fun, not fun at all to lift. Very difficult, some kind of special tools here and there, um, like axle nut sockets on those guys, like it's a th 39 mil, 12 point, stuff like that. Not recommended. If you own a Tundra, you want it lifted, you could try, you know, bang it out yourself, but I would rather have you go to a shop and take care of that, uh, you know, Nissan, Toyota, man, it just beats me up every time, and I'm honestly exhausted here, but, the grind don't stop. We're gonna be here modding our own truck now, which will give me a little more fire for the end of the day here. However, it's about that time. As you can see, we have the Whirly Custom Fab uh, air intake on this side. So what we're gonna be doing here today is, um, is installing the Banks Monster Ram air intake and the Boost Tube upgrade kit for these new Rams as well. If you missed my last video, you saw we got it done in Illusion Purple. So we're going to get everything out of the box and on the table. And um, we're going to start digging into this. Install may or may not be difficult. Um, should be quite simple, actually, if you know, get all the harnesses and stuff out of the way. But it should be straightforward. So we're going to get everything out of the boxes and um, start digging into it. So I'm excited. So guys, everything you see here was ordered and powder coated at Whirly Custom Fab. If you guys are just tuning into the channel, anything on their website, um, including stuff like these boost tubes that uh, you know I contacted them, asked them to get them, so I could pair them with this and have them both powdered Illusion Purple. Um, 6.7 line will get you free shipping on anything on their website. Just a reminder, this Illusion Purple looks beautiful and I cannot wait to get it underneath the hood. Now, as you can see, what most people do here is this. Now, this is the four inch banks uh, intake. I went with four inch because, you know, instead of just doing the three and a half inch and then replacing it down the road, if I went crazy, horsepower or whatever, uh, I'm just gonna do this up front and take care of that now. So I went with a four inch just because. And when you go four inch, you can no longer use your stock boost tube. Some people have said they, you know, they've done it, but I don't know how because even on the website it says you need aftermarket or boost tube upgrade. Now the thing is, these boost tube upgrade kits can mount to your factory intercooler, which is down here, but your factory intercooler can mount to the upgraded boost tubes. And the upgraded boost tubes can mount to the new four inch intake horn. So what that means is you can use the four inch intake horn, the upgraded boost tubes, and the factory intercooler for now. Now, I didn't opt for the intercooler yet, However, I will, trust me, that is 100% in the plans. That's always been in my plans for this truck. Um, probably we'll dive into that when I do off-road bumpers because the bumper will already be off. For now, we're doing the intake horn and the boost tubes. A lot of people don't do this, but I figure while I'm in there, get them powdered purple. So, you know, if you're down and in the hood, you can obviously see the beautiful, beautiful Illusion Purple color. If you guys didn't know, this will also be my suspension and wheel color uh, for my new setup so that's super exciting as well it, it's an awesome awesome color straight from the banks power website banks monster ram flows at 1008 cfm which is 133 percent increase over stock okay so this will flow 77 pounds a minute of air compared to the stock 33 pounds a minute of 33 pounds a minute of air um let's see more responsive more efficient uh engine 
and has the flexibility with the ports. What else can we run here? So it's going to improve airflow from the intercooler, raises boost without increasing turbine pressure, um, larger, less restrictive, um, oxygen rich air into the cylinders, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, so pretty much this flows better than stock. So that's for that. Uh, the boost tube upgrade kit here from Banks flows 103% more over stocks. The stock 2.3 inch uh, boost tubes go to a 3.5 inch boost tube. And what else do we have here? Quicker turbo spool, better flowing intercoolers, um, retention of boost pressure, which would be awesome for the G56. Uh, what else here? Lower EGTs, perfect fit and finish. So that's that. So pretty much, so pretty much better flowing air into your motor, which obviously is keeps your EGTs cooler, your motor cooler, uh, the bigger tubes keeps your boost pressure up, uh, builds boost faster, spools the turbo faster, stuff like that. Now here's the thing: you guys see my truck? It's lifted. It's got big tires. It's getting lifted more. It's getting bigger tires. This truck is not a race truck. Don't sit here and think I'm trying to. I'm going to do this and gain a thousand horsepower. No, I'm doing this simply for a little more low end spool. Hold some boost, yada, yada, yada. I don't care about factual numbers. So just put, before you guys all go off in the comments and say, oh, everyone just does this just because, yada, yada, yada. I, I get it. This is everyone's favorite mod. Um, mainly, one of the reasons I'm doing it, because it's going to look freaking sick also. Fair disclosure. Uh, I'm not going to deck front some other way. I'm going to say it's honestly going to look awesome as well. So it's going to complete my engine bay and give me a little bit quicker spool hold my boost a little longer. I'm not going for horsepower here, but what I am going for is to start digging into this. So let's get into this guys without further ado. I'm gonna be honest that came out a lot easier than I thought um, obviously because other parts already fell off um, it was probably just a bit easier but pretty much all you got to do is get all the wiring uh, harnesses that are attached on these things that are slid on um, take those off and um, with that unplugged and your map sensor unplugged that's all you really need to be honest um, but here is the factory one. I really don't want to touch this with my greasy hands, but here's the factory one. And here is the Banks Monster Ram. You can obviously see the difference already. Look at these holes. Look at how much air is coming in here. Look at how much air is coming in here. And on top of that, look at how much air is being sucked into this small area compared to this large area so you can obviously see the difference there There is the um, factory boost tube, and if you take the wheel liner out, it's right in your face, so it's ease, ease of access and no problem at all. We're gonna loosen the clamp on the bottom boot there, and we'll be able to stick the driver's side boost tube in, and then attach the intake horn up there. So just like I said, doing this step, just like, just like doing your exhaust, this step makes your life so much easier. Okay. Okay, so I loosened that pretty good underneath there with this um, 11 mil, a whole lot of like this at different awkward angles to get that clamp on done. So I'm gonna try and yank it out. Uh, hopefully it's loose enough here. Um, pretty much gonna tuck myself in there and try to yank it. All right, so I pretty much loosened that thing crazily. So I'm gonna get underneath there with a the pry bar and uh, kind of nudge that boot loose. And then if I can do that, then the pipe should just slip off, but that's pretty much what we're waiting on here. Okay, so with a little bit of persuasion later, 
we will be able to grab the stock boost tube. Here's your stock boost tube compared to uh, what we're putting on. I don't want to ding up the powder, but you can see the difference. Okay, so we're gonna put the um, driver's side boost tube back in now. Oh, this color is gonna look so good everywhere on this truck. But we're gonna stick this tube in now. Uh, the clamp is already on the bottom, so all we gotta do really is just kinda stick this on. So there's your black spring, and then there's the purple. Let me get some light on the subject. Oh my lord, that's gonna look way too, way too good. Oh, goodness, guys, that is fantastic. Wow, go me, I did it right. That's gonna look so sharp. All right, so that's looking good. You can see it uh, popping up up here, right over here. So, where is it? Right here, popping up. But this time, all right, you can see the boot is on the intercooler now. It's gonna get around there, but once I get it around there, pretty much we're gonna run that uh, clamp like this so I can actually put a socket on it. Just a little tip for you guys. So if you hear someone talk about your fuel rail plug, this is it. It's like a $30 mod. You could screw this one out and put one in that's like a solid plug with no spring in it. Um, keeps a, cons a consistent fuel rail pressure, but like I said, I'm not going for high horsepower. Didn't do enough research about it. If I really want to uh, down the road, I can always take the intake horn out again and put the... Um, fuel rail plug in but for now we're not doing that so in the instructions it says this is um, you're okay this is not pressurized when the motors off so pretty much just use shop towels here and you'll be able to, I don't really have shop towels with me so we're gonna use paper towels and um, what we're gonna do here is it's a 19 mil and we're gonna be able to loosen this side So there we go, and here's the other fuel line, other end of the fuel line I should say. Perfect. The new fuel line that's provided in the kit, and it looks like it's going to run a whole lot like this, and then actually come in here and tighten it down the other one had some I think there's a torque spec to it but the other one had some beefy torque to it so we're gonna tighten it down honestly I thought the fuel line would be like not like scary but never done anything with like fuel line and stuff so we're gonna obviously check that for leaks but um, it's pretty tight taking off is pretty tight as well it's just time to put the uh, new intake horn in Just what I needed. Also what I needed. Yeah, so not only have I, was I beaten up by a Tundra today, this kind of beat me up. I've got a socket somewhere stuck in uh, my six mil Allen. Somewhere stuck in the engine bay. I have no idea where it went. I had my hand on it and then it just disappeared. Thought it went in the fan, fan shroud. Took that plastic off, not there. I heard a clank on metal, maybe in the frame. Who knows? However, this is all bolted up. Got the dipstick bolted to here. And now, some of you guys might not like this, but I'm a 6.7 guy. I like the shroud on the motor, so I'm gonna be putting that back on. It works with the uh, intake horn, even though it's purple. Yes, I will be putting the shroud back on just because I like the 6.7 to look like a 6.7. However, first, we're gonna make sure there's no fuel leak on that new fuel line. So we're gonna start her up here. Let's hope for the best, because I do not want to be doing this again.
Okay, so what it looks like is there's no leaks. It looks like the fuel that was on the rail from when I disconnected the line is still there. No puddles, nothing shooting out. Get uh, revved it a couple times. Everything looks good. So um, what I'm going to do here, pick up all my tools, put the uh, put the shroud back on. I know a lot of you won't like that, but I'm just a 6.7. I like, how this, I like the way the 6.7s look. And uh, as you can see here, we still have one pipe left. That is definitely going to be have to be for tomorrow. It's, uh, yeah, if you can see here, it's like 1023. So we're going to pack all this stuff up and we're going to hit the road. Uh, I, I'm exhausted. I don't want to be here another even 45 minutes. So we're going to have to uh, deal with that tomorrow. All right, guys, everything is pretty much tidied up and put away here. Uh, as you can see, the shroud is back on. Uh, Whirly Custom Fab intake over here and the boost tube on the driver's side is in. I have the uh, passenger side boost tube all packed up in here and we'll either get to it tomorrow or the day after. Uh, that one will be quite simple. Um, you can even see it from here. It's right there. That tube. That tube needs to go. Connects to the turbo. Because it's been a long day guys. The Tundra kicked my butt. This kicked my butt. I'm hoping when I back out that the socket's laying on the ground because uh, I have no idea where it went. And we should be good to go. I'm going to finish putting a few things away like this. And then we'll get on the road. Yes, I get it. The tires are loud. All right, here we go. That was like a quarter throttle even, but I mean, it just built and went. I mean, she had a lot more pull to her too. And look at the, uh, I say, look at the MPG gauge over here on the left. Build some boosts and just cruise. All right, guys. So we're home now. I could tell you that. I mean, I am. I'm. I'm. We are home now. I am exhausted. I am tired. So what I'm gonna do? Um, like I said, took it on the highway. It goes zero from zero to hundred real quick. Fourth gear goes zero to hundred real quick. Clearly, um, it drives. It. I'm gonna be honest. It does drive different. Um, nothing that's like throw you back in your seat and like crazy, crazy. Um, but I'm going to see what the passenger side pipe does because I believe that's the inlet pipe and the other one is the outlet. I forget which one it is, but um, the pipe that's going straight to the turbo, I'm gonna, I've swapped it out probably tomorrow and see if there's even a bigger or different, different difference. But um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I just want to say at the last moment here, like I'm exhausted and I'm beat up and torn down but i just want to say thank you guys for your support recently and all that's that is what makes all of this worth it you know working all day and then doing mods and trying to learn you guys as well so um i just want to say thank you for the support and you know that this is what makes this all worth it so take care if you haven't been here for if you haven't been here before, please get down there, click subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, shoot it a like, and I will see you guys in the next video.